Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to run completely contradictory headlines back to back on our YouTube channel. Ah, too much water. We're really games journalists now. Hey, <laughs> this is just what we do. Feel free to dunk on us in the comments all you want. But the truth is, Starfield's whole reception has been contradictory. Mm -hmm. This entire episode will prove that. Uh, folks have received bad news with enthusiasm uh, in Starfield and the usual gamer skepticism seems to be completely gone, which is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of looking a gift horse in the mouth, but it's weird. <laughs> you know, what's going on here? Have the gamers finally mellowed out or are people setting their expectations way too high? Mm, probably a good policy to just be quiet, appreciate that everybody's excited instead of pissed off for once, which doesn't happen very often in the games industry, but we're gonna get into the news regardless here. So Starfield is still a few months away. The game's graphics and performance are still sparking fierce debate around the industry. That's because Bethesda's Todd Howard recently said that the game would be locked at 30 FPS on current Xboxes to ensure consistency in performance. Yeah, that disappointed some, like me, who were expecting 60 FPS on modern consoles. Uh, instead, the game will only support 60 FPS and native 4K on PC. Meanwhile, other sites have been doing side-by-side -side comparisons of graphics in the game's demos and have noticed some changes from the 2022 demo versus the one from this year. As Dark Side of Gaming put it, there are noticeable downgrades in some characters' facial hair, their eyes, and other features. You can see it right here. And that drew other comparisons to game like Witcher 3, which drew heat after their final product's graphics didn't match earlier demos. I think Watch Dogs was the first one that people lost their minds over. I remember that. Uh, DSO writer John Papadopoulos wrote, and if the media criticized The Witcher 3 or Watch Dogs or other games for their downgrades, they should as hell criticize Bethesda for their lackluster characters. Yeah, yet again, it's a weird position to be in to tell people they should be madder about this thing, but... No, no, we, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what are we dealing with here? We got last gen frame rates and obvious visual downgrades? Well, the gamers must be furious. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little disappointed, to be honest. Uh, we should apologize. Sorry up front if that triggered PTSD for any of you in the audience that survived that whole Puddlegate debacle. Ugh. Oh my gosh, Puddlegate, Spider-Man. Never forget. No one Bruce. could play that game after the puddles were downgraded. Uh, I can't stop looking for the puddles and they're gone. <laughs> Where are my puddles? But, but here's what's weird about Starfield. Nobody cares. <laughs> While there has definitely yeah. <laughs> been some criticism of Starfield's looks and performance by gaming YouTubers, most people have kind of come down on the side of Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, consensus across media folks and a whole lot of really amped up people in the comments of our videos agree that given Starfield's ambitions, 30 FPS is totally fine. Very interesting because we don't know what the game is actually going to be. Uh, Digital Foundry's <laughs> Sean Linneman wrote that, quote, like prior Bethesda titles, it seems that Starfield tracks the location and position of arbitrary items in the world. A technology that Bethesda games have had for over 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he and others have used the plate of sandwiches as an illustration of why it would be tough for the game to hit 60 FPS on consoles. During the recent Starfield Direct, producer Jamie Mallory revealed that she enjoys stealing other players' sandwiches and hoarding them. That's awesome. This is That's like core Bethesda games. This is what you do. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. The sneaky producer said that I steal all the sandwiches and put them in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. Can't wait. I, I'm, I'm going to do all that for sure. Uh, and Linneman wrote that from Digital Foundry. Uh, while it's used as a gag in the video, this sandwich pirate concept highlights one reason why 60 FPS would be tough to achieve. I'll get into it in a minute. Um, <laughs> basically, there's a lot of sandwiches, all right? And the physics collisions, you got to calculate them all, those sandwiches, so they don't like wobble and then vibrate and shoot out of the walls of your spaceship. Yeah. Which they might do, but we'll see. But yes, calculating all the physics for all those objects, it adds up really fast. You need time to do that math. He added that quote, the player has so much freedom in this regard that it becomes presumably impossible to keep the frame budget below 16 milliseconds. Presumably. I guess. Sure, the we don't know freedom because players no one's have played the game. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> but it, the, what was demonstrated is the same freedom that players have had in Bethesda games for 10 years, which is stacking things in a room. Why, why does that suddenly mean that it can't hit six? Well, whatever. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. Sheesh. Uh, even developers at Sony Studios have jumped in to defend Bethesda here. Uh, Danny Carlone, a senior staff environment artist at Sony Santa Monica, wrote that, it's, quote, 60 FPS on this scale would be a large hit to the visual fidelity. My guess is they want to go for a seamless look and less pop-in. And Lee D'Amato of Screen Rant wrote that Starfield's controls shouldn't require the kind of fluidity of, say, a fighting game with long combos or a high-speed racer with tight turns. Uh, they added that, quote, 30 FPS should suffice for the kind of space-faring adventures Starfield should provide. Suffice, yes, I guess it will suffice. There are many things that could su suffice, yeah. <laughs> 
Eurogamer's Will Judd also defended Bethesda locking Starfield at 30 FPS on consoles, writing that, quote, as a developer, you may as well crank up the visuals and embrace that 30 FPS output for an overall more consistent output, knowing as well that the PC release ought to run at 60 FPS for those that need a higher frame rate and have machines capable of delivering it. All of this on the heels of another Microsoft exclusive, which we all know and love. Well, not love. Redfall, which was blasted. I mean, absolutely blasted for performance issues, specifically for running at 30 FPS instead of 60 on a console. <laughs> Can't stack sandwiches in Redfall, Bruce. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so, you know, it could be a sign that Microsoft and Bethesda are learning from Redfall's mistakes, specifically promising what they don't deliver, which, I don't know, we'll, uh, we have yet to see on that one. Yeah, in Starfield's case, Todd Howard and Bethesda got out in front of the issues. Very, very smart, saying up front that it would be locked at 30 FPS on consoles. And I think Todd even said uh, it may go to 60, but it'll probably be 30. Like, I think he was sort of like, you know, He's trying to under deliver, or I'm sorry, under promise, which is a good idea. Um, this way they could just take the heat now. It'll be an old issue by the time the game actually releases in September when everybody gets it and goes, oh, it's 30 FPS. That's right. They told us. Yeah, smart move. And you can't argue with the results. Everyone's really positive on the game. They've theoretically got all the bad news out there. So now they just get to lead up to launch. So really well done there and uh, incredible job inoculating themselves against criticism later on. Yeah, plus they do have a valid point that Starfield is a much more expansive and graphically intensive game than Redfall. I mean, absolutely, by far. Sure, uh, but, but, God, okay. <laughs> I've been saving it for a while. Um, I know you have. Yeah. I know you have. I want, damn it. Like I've said a lot, I don't, I don't want people to be mad. I don't. I'm just worried that the skepticism is gone completely. It's just like evaporated. The gamers don't want to be hurt. Yeah. They, they've been lied to before. But we're in full on, I can do whatever I want in Starfield mode, and that's bizarre to me. It's, so, uh, before you launch into your editorial, because I don't want people to be like, these guys hate Starfield. They, I don't. I've been talking about Starfield for a year. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I've been uh, waiting for the broken bugs and the terrible physics and like to run around in this world that they've, because I really do love Bethesda games. I, I'm a huge fan of Skyrim and Fallout. I just, I'm, I'm so excited. But also, there's a lot of contradiction and a lot of hype for something that we've barely seen. Now, before, again, before Lawrence talks about this, please, let's everyone remember Cyberpunk. Let's everyone remember how excited everyone got about Cyberpunk and then where everyone was let down. Don't do that to yourself this time. <laughs> Don't do that. Just go in with a, just a little bit of skepticism, maybe a little more. All right, sorry, let's go ahead. I guess, I guess ultimately, I think, I don't want to speak for you, Bruce, but I'm a little worried about the future where people get Starfield and they realize they can't do whatever they want. And that's <laughs> when people start sending developers death threats. So, you know. Right, yeah. Temper expectations now, but yeah, let's, okay, let's get into it. All right. Uh, qualifications. Let, let, let me establish why I feel a little, a little qualified to say what I'm about to say. Uh, I'm a computer science graduate. Bruce, you actually are too. That's right. So we know a thing or two about PCs. Uh, I've worked with PCs since I was able to afford one. I have coded my own graphics engine inside of OpenGL before. Uh, so I know how game engines work and what performance bottlenecks are. I won't presume to know Bethesda's tech and the intricacies of, of it, but um, I have some idea about like bottlenecks and hardware and CPUs. And yes, I agree. There's absolute truth to everything John Lineman says about, about CPU bottlenecks and physics being a, a more math intensive things. But what I've seen from a lot of media is tons of assumptions. It seems weird. It's yeah. like driven in reverse. They're like, oh, it's 30 F FPS because you must be able to do all these things. That's right. But we didn't see any of that. They had 45 yeah. minutes to show something really cool and interconnected and like one event leading to another event to another event. But we didn't see any of that. And if, if anything, Bethesda games are getting less interconnected in terms of their systems. I feel like Fallout 4 and 76 from like Skyrim to Fallout 4 to 76 is almost a downslide to me of open world simulation. They, they keep things more compartmentalized and, and more stable, to be honest. We should also say we're big fans of Digital Foundry here. Like I, it's, mm -hmm. I'm, I watch their channel and I love what they do. I'm, we're not saying that they're wrong. It's more of just like they're making assumptions and I think we're all hoping that it'll be that way. <laughs> yeah, or using yeah using that as reverse reverse justification that it must be that way since it is 30 FPS. Right. So it's it's just odd to me that everyone's assuming that there's all these interconnected gameplay systems that are that are demanding on a Xbox Series X, but we didn't see any evidence of that at all. 
We didn't see animals reacting to anything. They just attacked the player and died. We didn't see AI reacting to anything. Your gun's even lowered in the city. You can't mm -hmm. shoot or do it. Like all you can do is talk to NPCs, I assume. We didn't see any anything else proving otherwise. So I don't know, in an era when like everyone's hyper skeptical of what they don't see, it seems like everybody's assuming a lot about what they didn't. So here's, here's a, a theory. There's a lot of scenarios that would absolutely justify 30 FPS to me. Let's say you're on a planet and you like start a fire or something and then you leave and then you come back and the entire forest is burned down. Like it was calculating oh, the fire while you were gone. That'd be so cool. <laughs> There's, no way. Well, There's no there might way. There's no way. I mean, yeah, sure. Know. That'd be amazing, but no way. <laughs> I mean, does time pass when you're not? What I imagine is it probably keeps track of how long time has passed. And as soon as you get near it, it'll calculate it all and then render it for you. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if you have a pile of sandwiches on your ship, and you get out and walk across the planet, it's not still calculating physics on those sandwiches. It knows where you are and what's gonna change, I don't know. So there's there's some odd things. Where I arrive at is based on what we saw, I don't see anything that means this game can't hit a lock 60 on a console. Um, maybe there is something, and, and I guess like most other media, we have to presume there is, but again, we, you can only judge it on what you see. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, comparisons are weird too. I mean, people have been comparing it to Zelda open world game with a lot of physics, but that's on a, a handheld that costs twice as much and came out twice as long ago. So the fact that Starfield is being held up next to Tears of the Kingdom, which is a miracle, it's a technical miracle, but still that Starfield should outclass Zelda. It should be embarrassing. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's weird that it's not, I guess the fact that you can theoretically go to a lot of pro procedurally generated planets. Zelda clearly doesn't have that, but Still, it's weird to me. Uh, I don't like being on this side of the argument. I hate it. I want to tell gamers to be more happy and, and, <laughs> and more receptive. Uh, but, you know, I'm just, I'm wondering, Bethesda's had a lot of time since Fallout 4. That came out in 2015 Whew. and then 76 in 2018. So they've had a lot of time. They're only working on three platforms, I guess, but PC is everything. But Series S and X, they dropped PlayStation. So I expected, I expected a technical delivery hmm. of like, we've narrowed our platforms. The Series X is like super powered. We can show what it can do, but I don't know. Bethesda Game Studios is a crowd pleaser. Everyone loves those games. Uh, so it's probably not gonna turn disastrous in the end, which is also weird. Another way that Bethesda kind of dances between the raindrops. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know what, what I arrived to actually, Bruce, at the end of all of it is like, there were some people that could not enjoy an open world game that didn't have fully immersive GTA style police when Cyberpunk like came out. That <laughs> was the thing, right? <laughs> Did you see cool police in Starfield? No. <laughs> no. Did you see any kind of anything of the like universe reacting to you doing bad stuff? I mean, no, I saw a Bethesda game. Like again, like this is I've been I've been talking about this forever. Starfield's going to be Fallout in space. That's what it's going to be. If you like Fallout you're going to like Starfield. It's gonna be kind of broken. It's gonna be kind of buggy, and that's okay. It's all right. Like it's like like I'm really excited about the about playing the game, but it's really interesting to see a bunch of people apologize for it. And also another interesting thing that we saw in our comments last week when we when we titled our episode "Everyone Hates Starfield," everyone's like, "All I've seen is a positive response." Now that's not true because literally directly below and above them, I would see comments that were like, "Man, this looks like trash. 30 FPS sucks." So. Very interesting that Bethesda has got the internet on their side. The only thing I can say, the only thing I can do is warn you. Don't go into this thinking you can do whatever you want. Lawrence was just made a lot of salient points there. It's a video game. There's going to be a gameplay loop. It's not going to be like we can go to any planet and do whatever we want and build a base everywhere and like light a fire on every planet and come back to the planet. It's going to be <laughs> Fallout in space. I hope I'm wrong. I do. I hope it does everything we all want, but it's not. It's not going to do that because it's a consumer product. So it's okay. And also, I love that the developers were jumping to other developers' defense, by the way. We weren't using that against them at all. It's more of, I'm so I'm excited that they're all like, no, that's whatever, 30 FPS is fine. We, just, we said the same about Zelda on this show. We said, well, it doesn't matter. Zelda's 30 FPS, 60 FPS is still going to be great because it's a Zelda game. And that's the way I feel about this game. If it's 30 FPS or 60 FPS, I think it's still going to be fun. <laughs> that's just uh, that's what I think so it's alright guys but be 
careful. Don't pre-order. They just raised the price of Game Pass. Like I said, they would. Oh, they did? They just, yeah, they, Whoa, yes, they, they did. Going, oh, dude, they, I thought it was going to be like after Starfield. No, they just raised the price of Game Pass. That should have been after, dude. Uh, you get all these people starting the game. They got their save file. And then you're like, <laughs> guess what? It's more expensive now, motherfucker. Sorry. Well, they only raised it a couple bucks. So they raised the price of Game Pass because they need to make money on Starfield. And that's totally fine. So do it that way. Don't get $70 game and then be like, I can't believe they're charging you $70 for this broken mess. Don't do it. Get it on Game Pass or fucking don't buy it. That's always my bottom line answer. If people are reviewing this, it looks like trash, I'll buy it. <laughs> just wait. You know, Bruce is part of this. I went back to watch the direct again just to be like, all right, I was I was on some white claws. I was yelling last time. I, so I gave it I gave it the full on theater treatment. And I'm a little more excited now. I am. There were a couple great. more things I saw. Uh, and like you said, I get in my own head about a lot of stuff. This is where I'll eat crow before the audience force feeds it to me. But I get in my own head a lot about a lot of stuff. But you're right. It's just fun. I think that's where a lot of Bethesda yeah. Game Studios games go. Is you can, I love it. Yeah, you can get really cerebral about how it doesn't do all these things or part of its illusionary. But it's just fun. That's what people want. It's going to be fun. We're going to make all a bunch of dick spaceships. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Smash them into each other. People are going to, I know they're going to shit on both of us for this, but hey, whatever. And if you want to hear more of us talking about our opinions and how wrong we are all the time, there's an Inside Games Patreon, and these people are supporting that Patreon, and they believe every single word that I say. Mason Hoover, Rook, Cap Coldblood, Crab Foam, Christopher Glavin. Thanks again for believing everything I say. I've got a handful of patrons that believe everything Todd Howard has ever said. And guess what? They're happy. <laughs> Go to sleep. No problem every night. Sherwin Sanchez, Zach DeHack, Sean McLaughlin, and Charles Gard. Keep believing.